I'm a product manager at Illumina in the Infectious Disease and Microbiology and Environment Department. So I'm really excited to talk to you today about metatranscriptomics. So I think this crowd is very familiar that we know that microbiome is broadly implicated with many different health states and disease states, and even how uh, certain people respond or don't respond to oncology treatments. Um, and, but we also are just starting to uh, take a look at this from a very um, new view. And I think it's important that we look at new technologies and look at how we can deeper and better understand these associations. So here's just a brief way that uh, people look at the microbial um, microbiome. And for example, there's a 16S sequencing. This is, I think, is very popular uh, technique and it's widely used to look at the um, diversity who is there. Then there's the uh, shotgun sequencing or metagenomics here. Where you're looking at not just who's there, but also on the strain level and what uh, functional pathways may be in the community. Uh, this provides information on the potential of what the functional activity may be. Uh, with that, I'd like to focus on metatranscriptomics. And here you're looking at the actual RNA activity of the microbiome community and uh, what's, what genes are turned on, what genes are turned off, and it doesn't really, uh, not so much uh, dependent on the DNA. So here's a, a really great study by the Huttenhauer Lab and, and some people who are presenting today. Um, and what they show is that RNA is not always correlated with DNA abundance. And that's important because if you're looking at the uh, gene genes that are available in a microbiome, it may make you think that, oh, there's a lot of these genes and therefore a lot of gene expression in this. But this is not necessarily the case. And of course, depending on treatments and environment and different, um, uh, different activities, this may change. So I just wanted to say why we really want to look at RNA. Of course, there's many challenges in looking at metatranscriptome. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, most RNA from bacteria is ribosomal RNA, uh, up to 99% or even more. Uh, just for reference, uh, human and other mammals is around 90%. So this is very high. Uh, but if you remove the RNA prior to sequencing, you can really focus on some more of the informative transcriptomes. Um, also, bacterial expressed RNA does not have poly-A tails. I think most people know this. So this makes it very difficult to just pull out the expressed RNA. Um, and also, I think um, one major barrier into getting into metatranscriptomics is that the analysis is complicated and computationally heavy. Uh, and that's why we are really excited to have a, a base space app that basically makes this a very simple to use uh, click and, uh, and look uh, and data analysis. So then I'd like to introduce Ribozero Plus Microbiome. This is a product we launched about six months ago. And this is um, an extension of the Ribozero Plus for those of you who are familiar. And this allows for metatranscriptome sequencing. And this is specifically designed for microbiome studies, uh, mostly looking at stool samples from humans and mice and also skin samples. And this is a what I'd like to consider an RNA through analysis solution. It has um, the library preparation, the sequencing uh, consumables that you can get for Illumina and as well as the analysis. So what makes this uh, Ribozero Plus microbiome uh, useful for metatranscriptomics? I just want to talk a little bit about how we designed it. We didn't really just go through a list of bacteria that we think are associated with stool samples. We actually took real world samples that our collaborators at the Diversogen provided us. We did different iterations of depletion. And, therefore, and then from there, we designed the depletion uh, for our RNA based on real world samples from many different donors. This is in addition to ATCC samples um, that are commonly found in uh, bacteria, um, stool samples, but also skin. So here's just very briefly the workflow. There's the RNA depletion up front. This would be the RNA uh, microbiome depletion. And then there's the stranded um, Illumina total RNA library prep, which includes the cDNA uh, reagents. And it can work on any Illumina sequencer. Of course, the more reads you want, the larger the sequencer. So the question, of course, is how much RNA is remaining? Um, we don't want the RNA. This is really uninformative for most people. And um, the whole goal is to deplete it. So on the x-axis, we have the percent RNA remaining. And with no depletion, which is these two red bars, we see that there's almost 100% RNA. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the current Ribo Zero Plus product, um, while there is some depletion, it was designed with E. coli and bacillus only. Um, it's not as, um, doesn't work as well as the one that is designed specifically for the microbiome. Here we have a wide diversity of RNA from various bacteria that it depletes. And then here's just a, another commercial product. 
So I'd like to talk a little bit about our uh, base-based microbiome metatranscriptome app. Uh, first of all, it's free to use. Um, and here's a little icon if you want to find it. It's GUI. You just click a few clicks and it analyzes uh, your taxonomy and the metatranscriptome. Um, I'd like to point out that the pipelines that we used are published pipelines. So please refer to these if you use our base-based app. Um, and just very briefly, here's the workflow. What it does is it does the basic QC. It um, checks for any ribosomal RNA that may be left over and human and other um, RNA that you may not be interested in. And then you have the option of running both or one or the other pipeline. One of them is the human three, and this does the functional analysis. And then there's Kaiju, which does taxonomic analysis based on RNA. So it's not quite the same as a DNA taxonomy. And here's just some visualizations that you can see from the base space app when you run your samples. There's a heat map comparing all the samples. There's a summary of how many RNA reads are left. Um, and then also if you're running the Kaiju pipeline, you will see a chronograph that will show you not just the bacteria, but also if there's viruses or fungi or any other organisms in there. And then of course, uh, what people are most interested in is what pathways. Um, and here's just an example. It also provides go terms at various different levels of these pathways. So with that, I just want to kind of go a little bit deeper into, you know, why you do the RNA and what kind of microbial activity you can see on a normal stool sample. So here we have uh, human stool samples, and these are controls. And I just want to point out this is demo data that is available in the app that you can also play around and, and look and see if there's any pathways of interest. And when there is no depletion, what you see is that there is very few pathways that are found associated with that sample. And that's because majority of it is just RNA, or RNA or ribosomal. Um, and up here, I know it's very hard to see, but these are the bacteria that have been associated with these microbial activities and the abundance and how much they are uh, contributing. Um, so here you have the second sample. Well, this is exact same sample, but with the depletion, now you're able to see over, you know, over 60 pathways and you can take a look at all, well, these are very small to see, but you have other uh, metabolic pathways here like sucrose degradation and things that may be interesting, you know, if you're studying diabetes or if you're studying some other health state that may actually provide insight as to what these microbiomes are doing in a person's um, body compared to just looking at its RNA. So uh, that's why I'm really excited about this, because you can get a better view of what the actual pathways that are activated in a micro, microbiome sample. So with that, uh, this was very quick. I, I just wanted to um, briefly go over why and to summarize why people want to do RNA sequencing and, and why I think this is an exciting new frontier in microbiome science. Um, I think it's a great way to really uh, hone in on why are some drugs, for example, metabolized more than others by some people and some are non-respondents or why some people are associated with, uh, you know, are more affected by certain diets or not. We saw an earlier talk about the mice. Uh, maybe there's certain activity there in, in their microbiome that is affecting their diet and their consumption um, of, of uh, fatty acids. So there's a lot of different questions that can be asked with RNA. And I think that, you know, if you have, of course, the resources looking at both the RNA and the DNA is a great way to see, you know, what is, a, what is in this microbiome and, and how is it being affected by these different uh, influences. Um, so with that, I just uh, made it very quick and uh, just, you know, if anyone's interested, uh, please reach out to me after this. Thank you.